respected devotees again we've got the opportunity to, to be a part of this spiritual discourse which is surely going to benefit us in our life just like there should be combination of spirituality and uh, worldly affairs or to so to say physical science and spiritual science when there is combination of both the things in our life we really enjoy this life sometimes what happens uh, we are more forward in physical science and less forward in spiritual science so then there becomes a disbalance so if you are regular in spiritual discourses slowly and slowly we will be able to understand spirituality actually uh, understanding spirituality takes time first we have to listen it then we have to try to understand it and then think over it and then implement in our life then it will really benefit us because spirituality is not uh, uh, you know there is a difference between religion and spirituality general of course uh, if you go deeper both are same but uh, from an external view they are different religion means the rituals listening to speech, uh, listening to the different scriptures doing external pujas going to the temple these are all external uh, ways of worship and this is they are different in different religions and so we find the difference there when we go to the temple there are many temples of many gods someone prefer the temple of shiva some prefer the temple of lord vishnu some prefer the temple of lord rama in this way there are varieties and there are differences but in spirituality there is no difference spirituality is one and the same for all everybody and spiritual talks about the inner temple you know the word temple actually this person is also called temple and really actually the word temple denotes the inner temple external temples that we see are actually symbolic of the inner temple in the external temple we will find differences but in the inner temple it's one and the same for the whole humanity and uh, if you compare both of them uh, we'll find the similarity also i remember a saying of uh, uh, incident of swami vivekananda he was sitting in, he was standing in front of a temple and one child went to the temple he was very happy he said oh ho what's a uh, good uh, time has come that from childhood this boy is going to the temple very good thing very good sign for our society after some time i a old person was going to the temple and when vivekanand saw him he said oh ho uh, what a tragedy is it, it is this old man is up till now in such an old age also is limited to the inner external temple so he was very sad seeing that old man going to the temple there was a witness standing by he said swami ji when a child went to the temple you were happy and when the old man went to the temple you were unhappy why going to the temple is a good thing whether a child goes or an old person goes why did you make a difference swami ji said try to understand suppose your son goes to the school for study and you admit him class 1 you are happy that from now on my son will study and one day he will graduate and he will have a degree so it's that's a happy moment for you suppose your child for continuously 10 years remains in class 1 will you be happy he said no it's a it's a question of um, very very you know shocking um, thing which will be if, if for 10 years is in the same class he said swami ji said this is what i am saying 
the external temple as the beginning of his futility. But after that, that old person should have entered the inner temple, of which symbolic structure the external temples are. But still now he is uh, uh, absorbed, he is busy just going to the external temple and he has not been able to find out the inner temple. That's why I am feeling sorry for him. So actually friends, uh, you know, this is a fact. If you go, if you compare the inner temple and the external temple, you will find a lot, lot of similarity in between them. You know, we do four things in a temple. That is done almost in all the temples, whether they are of uh, Lord Vishnu, Rama, Krishna, Devi, whatever be the temple, generally we perform four things. First thing, we do light a lamp. And while uh, that light, that lamp, we call it Akhand Jyoti. Akhand means eternal light. Of course, we know that, that that light that we have put on the lamp is not eternal. It will, uh, it's temporary. If uh, the oil finishes, it will extinguish. If uh, some air comes up, it might be again uh, distinguished, uh, extinguished. Many, many, ch many chances are there that light may not, will not remain permanently. But still we call it Akhand Jyoti, means eternal light. Because that external light is representing the light within us, the light of the soul, the light of God within us, the divine light, the light of that energy which is dwelling within us. And as we know <coughs> about energy, law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor it can be destroyed. And that's about the soul also it says, Soul means subject of universal life. And uh, about the soul also, Lord Krishna says that nenam chidanti sastrani, nenam dahati pavaka, na chenam kalidanti apurna sosati maruta. This soul cannot be destroyed by anything, whether fire, water, air, nothing can disturb it. It's eternal. And same thing science is saying that energy is uh, can neither be created nor it may decide. It is eternal. So, to symbolize that light, our ancestor put a light in the temple, external temple, to make us understand that such type of light is within you. For this we need a lamp, we need oil, we need so many matchstick, so many things we need. For the inner temple, you don't need anything. It's self-effulgent light, like a radium. Neither even, you don't need the light of the sun, neither the light of the moon, neither of the fire. It's an automatic self-effulgent light within you. And when we enter the inner temple, we can see that light. I remember a hymn of uh, Ascent. Uh, his name was Brahmanan. <coughs> that he belonged to Rajasthan in India. Uh, when he entered the inner temple, there he says uh, that I have seen a miracle. I have seen a miracle that there is a building in the sky. You see <laughs> what he is saying? There is a building in the sky and it is lighted without any lighting uh, instrument. It's automatic lighted. And a blind person is seeing all that <coughs> and explaining that I am seeing such and such. We'll say he might have been drunk and in drunken, drunken uh, king stage, in that situation, in that position, he might have talked that. How can a building be in the sky, in middle of the sky? And how without any connection, how can there be light? And then how can a blind person who doesn't see, how can he see that light and explain about the light? Actually, that temple is within us. He was talking about the inner temple. 
you know this place is called it's a uh, in between uh, it is called a sky in spiritual language and behind this there is the light of god and these eyes are closed through the third eye a devotee a meditator experiences that light he sees that light not imagining not feeling because nowadays people have you know miss they are misinterpreting the experience of light just like when we sit in a picture hall we see the light we don't uh, imagine the light uh, we, we see the in picture whatever is coming we see on the screen then we don't imagine we don't feel anything whatever is coming on the screen we are practically seeing that experiencing that similarly when the third eye is open in the inner temple we see that light and to express that experience to symbolize that experience a it had, a light was lighted in the external temple of course it was called as the inner light eternal light so this first this thing we find in all the temples second they put on some many sounds sound of a drum of a conch of bells many sounds are you know uh, we hear those sounds they put on those sounds and uh, sometime one person asked the priest that why you make these sounds what is the reason behind it uh, of course he replied that god is sleeping to awaken him we are putting on this sound we are making this noise actually <laughs> god the energy never sleeps it's eternal it is permanent it is unchangeable but still he, he tried to explain that but actually that sound the music that we perform we make outside the different music that we make are also indication of the inner music the uh, one sentence said there there is a dome and a sound is coming concentrate and listen to that sound there is a natural dome not a man made dome kudrati मस्जिद की मेहराब में तू सुन गोर से आ रही धुन से सदा तुझे बुलाने के लिए देर इज ए नेचुरल मोस्क एंड देर इज ए डोम एंड इन दैट अ साउंड इज कमिंग कंसेंट्रेट एंड लिसन टू दैट साउंड एक्चुअली ही वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस द इनर म्यूजिक इन ऑफ द वर्स इन एवरी पर्सन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इन द इनर टेम्पल इनर म्यूजिक इज गोइंग ऑन i am not uh, you know trying to bluff you or to confuse you no what i am talking is the reality and about that sound about that music of the inner temple the saint again says in the second hymn he says oh brothers i heard different music without is uh, nobody is striking that music which when you uh, listen somebody strike that music whether it is a bell or a harmonium without striking the music cannot come automatically but he says there is an automatic music going on bina bajaye nisi din baje ghanta sankh nagali re means 24 hours that music is going on conch bell drums many type of music are going on and a deaf person the one who can't hear the outside sound a deaf person is listening to that music and is enjoying it not only listening he is enjoying that music that music is making him blissful full of bliss actually there is a inner music going inside our temple and that is in spiritual yoga language it is called anath nath anath means uh, non striking without striking 
and nad means a sound automatic sound is coming some of you might say how is it possible without striking how can there be sound i give a small example suppose you are in a hall and there is a mic going on somebody is speaking amplifier is there you increase the volume of the amplifier and when it crosses a limit <coughs> there is there will be a whistling sound who who created that sound did anybody speak did anybody strike no it came automatically and then we say to the to the person controlling the amplifier the mic we say oh please reduce the volume feedback is there and we call it feedback what we mean by feedback is the waves the vibration that was going through the microphone the amplifier amplify amplified it so much that the vibration which the, was going through the microphone came back returned to the microphone so we call it feedback and then there was a whistling sound similarly there is a bio feedback within us and when we go we make that bio feedback we listen the inner music without striking anything i i would like to explain a verse of kabir you know uh, i enjoy that verse he says कबीरा धारा अगम की सदगुरु दई बताए धारा को उल्टा किया तो स्वामी संग मिलाए इसे देर इज अ फ्लो गोइंग विद इन अस एंड इफ यू गुड रिवर्स दैट फ्लो विल मीट द मास्टर विल मीट द लॉर्ड विल मीट विल एक्सपीरियंस गॉड इन इज डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स व्हाट इज मीन्स एक्चुअली यू नो some people you know simple answer the simple uh, uh, this uh, meaning of this uh, verse what they say dhara ko if we reverse the word dhara it becomes radha and if you join it with swami so if you remember radha swami if you uh, utter this mantra radha swami you will have salvation you will attain god uh, this is superficial meaning they give but it is a spiritual meaning dhara means flow externally we see the flow of water flow of energy flow of electricity similarly there is a flow inside us the flow of consciousness from the soul to the mind there is a consciousness flow from the soul to the mind and from the mind it goes to the brain and the senses mind is the middleman between the senses brain and the god and the almighty or whatever you call it the soul we give different names to that energy you know so the energy is flowing from the soul through the mind to the senses and brain to the body now when it comes to the mind <coughs> if you could reverse the flow from there back to the turn that flow to go to the brain and senses if we reverse that flow from the mind back to the soul that is called bio feedback and so what kabir was talking about ki when i met the spiritual master you know a spiritual master means the one enlightened spiritual master again i am emphasizing the world enlightened spiritual master nowadays we find this philosophical spiritual masters very learned spiritual master but you know a learned spiritual master cannot make you these experiences that experience you can have only through by the grace of a enlightened spiritual master like buddha like krishna like kabir like sankracharya like nanaka so he, kabir says when i met an enlightened spiritual master 
it taught me how to reverse the flow and when i reverse the flow i met the lord i experienced that music and so that is by feedback and that is brahmanand sage saint brahmanand of rajasthan he says without making sound without striking anything um a beautiful music is going on and a big deep person is enjoying that music he is so bli- uh, um, so much hap- so much blissful with that music that he has forgotten everything he is big- in hindi say mast hua behra sun sun mast hota hai tan ki khabar bhi sari re he forgets the body uh, he goes away from the body and enjoy that music so to express the inner music we created a music in the outside temple you see the similarity third what we do we give a holy water or in hindus they call it panchamrit they mix five things in that and there they they uh, pronounce a verse also a shloka also akal mrtu harnam sarvyadi vinashanam vishnu chanodakam pitva pura jamna vidyati that if you drink this nectar amrit means nectar you know if you drink this nectar you will not have untimely death it will save you from untimely death and it will cure your diseases also and it will also liberate you uh, get you free from the cycles of birth and death this is the meaning of this verse they speak while offering that panchamrit but we can generally understand the quality the virtues that they are expressing is not in the external panchamrit but in the inner one these things are possible we have a inner nectar and that nectar is within all of us irrespective of our caste our creed nationality our social status it doesn't count that that nectar is within the inner temple and when we learn to drink it by the grace of the spiritual master then brahmanand again says about that nectar गगन बीच अमृत का कुआं झरे सदा सुख कारी रे पंगो पुरुष चढ़े बिन सीढ़ी पीवे भर भर झारी रे अचरज देखा भारी साधु भारी रे इज ओड फ्रेंड्स आई एम सींग मिरेक्कल देर इज अ वेल इन द स्काई नॉट ऑन द अर्थ देर इज अ वेल इन द स्काई एंड फुल ऑफ नेक्टार नॉट ऑर्डिनरी वाटर एंड अब and lame person who is without hands and without leg uh, he is without stairs is going up there and drinking that nectar you see it's not a theory or philosophy when we learn to enter that inner temple friends practically we will be drinking that nectar and that place uh, which is called the nectar that is scientifically if you talk it it is a pineal gland for science it is still a uh, mysterious gland science has not been able to understand fully about the pineal gland and all the other gland they have got fixed hormones they produce fixed hormones but the pineal gland can bring out any hormone even that hormone which can cure our diseases and uh, that practice is called the mother of the devotee mother of a meditator brahmanand says it is the mother which will save you from everything and which will help you when you are hungry or thirsty also you will quench your thirst without eating without drinking such a beautiful is within us friends and why it is called five, five things are mixed because our body is made from five elements ether water air fire and earth 
So these are the five fundamental elements from which the body is made. This is what we read in the scriptures. And these five elements have got five varieties, five types of taste. When earth, earth element is dominating the body, if we drink that nectar, we will have taste like sweet taste. Not completely sweet, but a sweet type of taste we will have. When the water element is dominating the body, we will have a salty type of taste. And this, uh, your air element is dominating, we will have a sour, a uh, sour type of taste, like lemon. Not same, are similar to that. And when the fire element is uh, dominating, we will have a bitter taste. In this way, we will have five types of tastes. So, to indicate those tastes, five things were mixed up in the external uh, nectar, which is, uh, which is called Panchamrit, and it was given to the devotee in the temple. That indicates the inner, inner nectar. And once we enter the inner temple, we will drink that nectar. Really, we get the chance to drink that nectar. And the, the taste of that nectar and the beauty of that nectar, the effects of that nectar is inexpressible. And the fourth thing he says, uh, the time is about to up, friends. So, in short, I'll speak about the fourth thing. Fourth thing he says, I see a person, uh, he's dead, again he's alive, again he's dead. And without eating anything, he's, he's healthy. So, actually, when we meditate on the holy name, in the inner temple, a holy name is going on. And that's also automatic going on. We need not uh, utter that name, you know. It's an automatic name going on and we connect the mind to it. When the mind merges in that name, uh, we almost become bodiless. And when we come back from that meditation, we are again awakened. So, dead alive, dead alive, this happens when we are in constant meditation, when we are absorbed in that meditation. So, these four things are naturally going within us. You know, uh, in the temple you see a, a rosary going on with 108 beats. Different mantras are there. Somebody utters some mantra, somebody prefers some mantra. But this external rosary is representing of the inner rosary. We have an inner rosary within us on which the name of God is going automatically. We need not uh, utter that name. Uh, we need not... Just we have to connect our mind to that rosary and we enjoy that meditation. So these four things are sown in the external temple and to, just to make a child understand the inner temple, the external temple was created by our ancestors, by our learned people, by our experienced persons. Because a child cannot understand the inner temple in a small age. So to make him understand the inner temple, that was a beginning. Like when we teach a boy A to A by A apple, B boy, C cat, D dog. A is not apple, D is not dog, C is not cat. But to make him understand <coughs> A, B, C, D, we take the help of these pictures. Similarly, to make him a person understand the inner temple, to make a child understand the inner temple, the temples were created. So when a child goes to the temple, Vivekananda was happy. But when an old man is limited on such an old age, up to the, only to the inner temple, he was sorry, he was unhappy. So friends, let's also... There is a door in the outer temple also. In the inner temple also, there is a door here. And when we meet the real master, the spiritual master, he, by his grace, by his spiritual power, will make us enter this temple. And what we see externally in the external temple, all these spiritual experiences we will practically have in the inner temple. And a child in the mother's womb experiences all these things in the inner temple. We experienced it, but when we came out, 
we forget all that and so the time is up um, let's close this session today um, but what listen let's uh, uh, think over that and try to try to enter the inner temple so that the peace that we are searching outside will be within is within us let's enjoy the peace enjoy this human life and make this life fruitful thank you everybody thank you very much